السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters, I know we are here, mashallah, to enjoy a meal. I have been asked to say a few words and seeing that the groom tonight is one of my friends in South Africa, a man whom I feel is one of the finest gentlemen that I know. To be honest with you, I have had the honor of traveling with him to Saudi Arabia at one stage and alhamdulillah, I feel quite close to him and I feel Really, he is a fine young boy. May Allah grant happiness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the two today together in happiness and peace, grant them pious offspring. The two families, may Allah bring them together in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with happiness. I wish to share with all of you today very few words. So I ask you for a little bit of silence and to try and listen to what I've got to say. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wish and I pray it will benefit me firstly and then everyone who is here. Have you ever thought of why it is that the verses that are read at the occasion of nikah are not addressed only to those who are the groom or the bride of that particular day? Take a look at the first verse. Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Whom is that addressed to? O oh people! Be conscious of your Creator, the one who has created you from one soul and so on and so on. And the verse continues. What I'm trying to get at here is the address. Look at whom this verse was addressed to. The occasion was marriage, but it was addressed to all the people. The second verse, O oh you who believe, be conscious of your Creator and fear Him and so on and on. And the verse continues. So it says, O oh you who believe. And the third verse is probably one of the most direct verses when it comes to marriage. And I want to read this verse and I wish that we could listen for a moment. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqullaha wa qulu awlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yawfir lakum dhunubakum Again, addressed, O oh you who believe, be conscious of your Creator and utter that or make sure that you only utter that which is upright, straightforward, which is the truth, which does not cause problems, which is not in any way hurting anyone and so on and so forth. And if you are going to ensure that you will only use your tongue in the correct manner, then not only will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your deeds pure and make sure that you have a decent life, but He will ensure that He will forgive you and you will succeed in a great way. That is in brief the meaning of this particular verse. Now, as I said, it's not addressed only to those who are getting married. But let me inform you, and I think the women will probably agree with this, because they are using their tongues at the moment when they are not meant to. They will agree with this that 90 or 95 percent of problems in marriage are caused by the tongue. 90 or 95 or maybe even further and more than that of the problems within marriage are caused by the tongue and the incorrect use of the tongue. So we need to train ourselves how to use this tongue of ours. You want to say something in the home? You want to speak today? When it's wrong to speak, that means there is incorrect use of the tongue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us abstinence here. So this is something that is very, very important. And I am addressing the brothers and sisters who are here today. Most of the problems in marriage are caused because you don't know how to use your tongue. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us upon this occasion. The verse is repeated. Only utter that which is upright, that which is straight, that which is not going to cause problems, that which is polite, that which, is, that which has all forms of goodness in it. So remember, when you are married, the golden rule is watch out, be careful of how you speak, because the way you speak can cause any and every problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us solve our problems. And the same applies, the way you use your tongue can actually help solve your problems as well. So that is the first message I have. That is a message 
to say, remember how you use your tongues and the address is not just to those who are getting married, but to everyone at every time. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, be careful of how you use your tongues. And if you are going to use them correctly, then th- these are the rewards we will give you in return. So let us learn that inshallah, and that is one very solid message.